fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> None of the thrilling events that marked the early frontier days of the western United States can equal the stirring deeds of the phantom figure of the plains. You will not find his name in the written pages of history, but his relentless fight against injustice won him a secure place in the hearts of the pioneers, and their descendants have never permitted his story to be forgotten. And now, adventure lives once more. The Lone Ranger rides again. thunder of Silver's hoofs, we heard the Lone Ranger say that there was trouble in the Indian country. In the first scene of our drama, we see the masked man and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, beside an empty stagecoach that has been abandoned five miles away from the regular stage road, leading from the town of Redford to Fort Pearson. Tonto, I wonder if this is the stage that disappeared yesterday with a load of ammunition for the garrison at Fort Pearson. Mm, This same stage, all right. It must be the one. See, it was especially constructed to carry boxes containing shells and guns. Oh, Chief White Bear's Indians must have held it up. And yet... What? Wrong. There are several strange things about it. Father, do you hear those shots? Them come in that way. They weren't fired at us, however. There come fellow around the horse. A white man. Ranger, help me! Engines are after me! There, engine, yonder. They're coming over that hill. Maybe them white bear engine. There are only three or four of them. A few shots will hold them off. Them stop. Yes, they've stopped on top of the rise. Come over here! He'll be safe! I'm coming! Engine turn. Them go back. They don't want to attack three of us. Oh, oh boy! Oh boy! Oh, there! You had a narrow escape. So blame now, mister. I can still feel the hot breath down my neck. No need to worry now. Thanks to you. You needn't be afraid I'm going to ask questions about that mask you're wearing. Or the engine with you, mister. You saved my life, and that's good enough for Mort Leeds. Are you Mort Leeds? That's my handle. Are you the man who drove the stage that disappeared with arms for Fort Pearson? Uh Uh-huh. That's me again. But what happened? Did Chief White Bear attack the stage? I'd sure enjoy telling you about it, mister. But let's get going out of this blame engine country first. It ain't so popular with me. You're going back to town? Sure I am. You going that far? No, but my friend and I will ride part of the way with you. Come on, Silver. Glad to have the company. Get up there. Get him up, White Fellow. Was it White Bear who got the arms? Well, nobody else. Him plenty bad engine. He's poison bad. He's raised more rumpus around this country the last four weeks than anybody ever did for him. What's more, he got Judd blast him. Judd? The guy that rode the stage with me. Them sidewinders never give him a chance. They come whooping and hollering out of the hills and kill him before he really had a chance to draw. Then you didn't try to fight them? Fight him? Mister, you never in your born day seen such a fight. Guns are blazing and horses screaming, and the stage tearing down the road like it had shaked to pieces. 
Them redskins kept the air so full of bullets it was like a swarm of bees. Jed was sagging again me as dead as all get out. And them painted engines was hanging onto the bridles of my horses till they just up and stopped. Me not see what Wait, you... fellow. Go on, Mort. And them devils made me drive the stage off to where you seen it back there. Loaded the ammunition on the horses, and then they, they took me back to the camp. They got up in the hills. You were fortunate to get away. You just bet I was. I thought my number was up for sure when they got me to camp. But when they wasn't watching close, I grabbed me a horse and lit out of there. If I hadn't met up with you two, I, I reckon they'd have catch me again. Glad we came along, Mort. You say you're heading for Redwood now? Yep. They'll be needing me there. Ain't another really good stage driver around these parts. And they still got to get ammunition to the fort. Who's in charge of the soldiers at Redwood? Cap Meadows has been there with the company ever since old White Bear went loco. This is as far as we go. We don't want to get too close to town. <laughs> Hi, Shabby. Massman ain't overly welcome any place. We may meet again. Uh, thanks for what you've done. Get along there. Get up there, boy. Get up there. Him not tell truth. No? Him not fight, Injun. There wasn't a bullet hole in that stage. No. There was nothing to show that the guard had been killed, as he stated. And him wear money belt. I noticed that too, Tonto. Looked as though it was filled. Isn't that plenty funny? It is. First place, no man would have carried a heavy money belt with him on a dangerous trip through this country. That's right. And if he had carried money, Chief White Bear would have taken it away from him. Perhaps. What you think? Perhaps White Bear gave it to him. You think more color let bad Indian get guns? No, no. White Bear would pay any amount for arms. His braves will follow him as long as he can furnish them with rifles and ammunition. Uh, We're going to keep an eye on Mort Leeds, Tonto. Mort Leeds returned to Redwood, repeated his thrilling story of the unsuccessful fight with Chief White Bear's braves, and was received as a hero. He made his official report to Captain Meadows, commanding officer of the company stationed in town. Then in the early evening, he went to the office of the Army Quartermaster, Eric Kramer. He was not aware, as he told his friend of his experience with a masked man, that the Lone Ranger had determined to investigate his actions. <laughs> So I told the masked fella in the engine about escaping from White Bear, and they fell for it hard. Are you sure they didn't suspect anything? <laughs> Nary a thing. But you say they saw the stage. If they did, they'd know there hadn't been a fight. Shucks, it wasn't at the stage five minutes. Five minutes would be enough, you fool. Ah, take it easy, Eric. What if they did notice something was wrong? The stage had been burnt by now. And who's going to take the word of a masked outlaw, anyhow? Mm, you're probably right. Did White Bear pay you? Just take a squid at this belt. <laughs> he paid up all right. And that ain't all. What do you mean? He paid up for next time, too. Next time? Look here, now, boy. hold on a second. You and me might just as well be getting the cash while it's to be got. Yes, but if and we any go... blame fool knows there's got to be another load of arms sent to the fort as long as the first didn't get there. Oh, that's so. But we can't do this too often. Who said anything about doing it often? I got enough good hard cash for these two times to leave us sitting pretty for a long while to come. Hmm. Of course, Captain Meadows is sending more arms. Sure he is. Nobody suspects you, so you'll probably drive the stage. Of course I will. But I don't understand why old White Bear paid you in advance. <laughs> the old devil didn't have no choice. What? I just told him if he wanted another load, he'd pay for it. We can't take chances being seen taking cash when he holds us up. Never can tell who might be looking on. Uh -huh. <laughs> you want to divvy up the gold now? Keep it out of sight. Captain Meadows may be here any minute. What's he coming here for? He's coming to tell us exactly what we want to know. What's that? When and how the next load of arms will be sent. <laughs> now, ain't that real nice of him? <laughs> he thinks he has a plan to get the next load through without trouble from White Bear. Yeah? And he wants our help. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing you know, he'll be asking White Bear for help. <laughs> Quiet. Huh? That may be him now. Come in. Evening, Cap. Good evening, sir. Well, you're both here, huh? Does Morton know why I'm here, Kramer? I told him you had a plan concerning the ammunition, sir. And we can get right down to business. Uh, sorry about what happened to the last load, Cap, but Never I... Never mind uh, that now. 
It wasn't your fault. I'm obliged to you for saying it. But naturally, you realize that Fort Pearson still needs arms. We'll get them there somehow. You're willing to try again? Willing? Just ask me, Cap. You had something in mind, sir? I believe I've thought of a way at last to fool White Bear. Yeah? The safest way, of course, would be to send a large escort with the stage. And leave Redwood unprotected? I can send a small guard along. Uh, begging your pardon, Cap, but what in blazes good would that do? You don't figure White Bear's are scared of a handful of soldiers, do you? <laughs> I intend to send a small guard with an empty stage. But what good would that... One moment. What about loading boxes with stone, putting them in a stage, sending an escort with them, and letting it be thought the stage contained arms? Maybe I don't just serve you, but... And then, didn't... after dark, send out the real load in another stage. You mean draw a white bear off of the first stage while the second slips through? Exactly. Jumping Jehoshaphat, Cap. That's a scheme that might work. You agree, then? What do you think, Kramer? I say the same as Mort. I'd hope you would. Mort? Will you drive the loaded stage? I said I would, didn't I? And I'll go with him, sir. Good. The fort must have those arms as soon as possible. Can you be ready tomorrow evening? Yes, sir. Very well. That's all for tonight, then. I'll be turning in. Good night, Cap. We'll teach the white bear a thing or two. You can rely on us, sir. And we'll arrange the final details in the morning. <laughs> white bear will have to know about this. I'll take care of that. Can you make it to his camp and back before morning? You just watch me. Tell white bear we leave after dark. Decide on a place to attack the stage. Well, Little Creek Bridge is the place. And a handier place in the whole road. Good enough. I'll be off to the hills right now. They got the gold, and tomorrow White Bear will have the guns. And not a blame soul to suspect a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Meadows, satisfied with the plans he had made, returned to his home on the far side of town. But he had not yet prepared for sleep when suddenly the door burst open and the tall figure of the masked man appeared. What the... I want to speak to you, Captain Meadows. You're wearing a mask. Yes, but I'm not an outlaw. Get out of here. Wait. You're going to hear what I have to say. Why, Teddy, under... Captain. Well, say what you have to say and get out. Do you want to lose more arms than Chief White Bear? What's that? If you do, follow the plan you made tonight. What do you know about that plan? Enough to know that it'll fail. You are an outlaw. You're working for White Bear. If I were, would I tell you that I know your plans? There's sense to that, all right. There'd be no reason coming here if I didn't want to help you. Mm, talk some more. I'll listen. Captain, you've been sold out by two men you trust. Go ahead. I'm still listening. Who knew about the last shipment of arms that was held up and stolen? Why, the quartermaster and the driver, of course. Wait. Are you hinting that... No one else? No one but Judd, the guard. And Judd is dead. Go on. If White Bear gets more guns, or the fort fails to receive the guns it needs, there'll be bloodshed. White Bear will plunder and kill. You won't be able to stop him. The two men who knew about your last shipment know your present plans. Are you going to take a chance with this next shipment, too? Do you expect me to surrender them on your say-so? I saw the stage. It had been robbed. You heard Mort Leeds tell of a fight. But there wasn't one mark from a bullet on that stage. Can you prove that? No. The stage has been burned. You can only take my word for it. And you think I'll do that? No, but you can do something else. What? You can let me show you how to get more proof. And if I don't? Then the responsibility for bloodshed will be yours. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is some kind of a trick. Maybe I've lost all the sense I ever had. But by thunder, I like the way you talk. Then you'll do as I suggest? Go on. I'm not promising a thing, but I sure want to hear what you have to say. The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. When Mort Leeds reported that Chief White Bear had held up his stage and taken the load of arms it contained, the Lone Ranger suspected his story and found his suspicions correct. He overheard a plot between Mort and the Army Quartermaster, Eric Kramer, to permit a second load of ammunition to fall into the hands of the Indians. The next evening, a crowd of curious onlookers gathered about the stage, which Mort, accompanied by Kramer, was going to drive. There's the stage Mort's driving. How loaded down, ain't she? Must be a needin' plenty of food at the port. Reckon they can make it? Wouldn't be in Mort's shoes for a heat. Now with the engines the way they are, well, you know, Jim, I'll Well, Cap, the last box is in, and I reckon we're all set. All loaded, you say, man. <laughs> loaded and raring to go. And the heft of those boxes were carrying enough stuff to wipe out White Bear and all these redskin relations. Careful, Mort. I told everyone those boxes contain only food. Hey, hi, Savvy. Expect any trouble? Shucks, Cap, that's something nobody can tell. But I ain't looking for none. No worry, sir. We'll get through if anybody can. That's the spirit. Now then, I think you'd better be on your way. Yes, sir. The first stage has had a three-hour start. In the darkness to help you, you should have a successful trip. Sure we will, Cap. Come on, Eric. we got a powerful long trip before us, before sunup. Wish us luck, Captain. Good luck, boys. All right, Mort. Let's go. Get up there. Get along there, you plastic critters. Get along there. There goes the stage. Sure, who? I'm driving the stage one night. Keep moving, Mark. Those papers don't get the port piercing. I lose money. I'm pretty scattered for the port, you know. Here you are, Fox. You can't outsmart me on that deal. I've got to take my. Men ready to start. You here? Aren't you taking chances wearing that mask in town? It won't be noticed in the shadow of this building. Maybe. Are your men ready, Captain? They are. Hadn't we better let the stage get further along? We have a long trip ahead of us. Better you go. No. Is this the Indian you mentioned? That was my friend. And lucky for him, he is. Indians aren't very well liked in this part of the country right now. Tell your men to get to the horses. They're just waiting for a command. We surely can't just follow the stage. We'll ride out of town, away from the road, then cut back through the hills. In that case, there's no time to waste. Orderly. Yes, sir? Call the men together. Let them mount and be ready for action. Hurry. At once, sir. You will have to ride fast, but we can make it. Here, Silver. We'll be ready to ride on your signal. Here, wait, fella. Yep. Tunnel, this ride may mean the lives of hundreds of people who live in this territory. Uh, that, that right. If we fail, Chief White Bear will be on the warpath for months to come. Lead the way. Come on! Get him up, Get right, him up. With the Lone Ranger in the lead on his great horse, Silver, the cavalry swept out of town. They left the road, heading across the open plain in a swiftly moving, compact group. But swiftest of all was the masked man's white horse, whose hoofs thundered against the earth. Come on, Silver, old fellow! Let's on those great legs of yours! I know! The town was far behind them. The Lone Ranger suddenly swung about and pointed the band toward the hills. Beyond was the road that led to the fort, and somewhere on that road was the Willow Creek Bridge, where White Bear's braves awaited the approaching stagecoach. But still, Silver's ghostly white shape paced the cavalry with the smooth speed of an arrow. Only a short distance now! Come on, Silver! The troopers' mounts were weary and spent when at last the masked man brought them to a hill that overlooked the winding road below. But there he reined Silver to a halt. Go, oh, Silver! Go, oh, steady! Oh. Oh. Are you... Did you get him here in time? We'll know when we're near the bridge. Where? Where bridge? Another half mile. We'll stop here and approach quietly. Under, mister. I've never been on such a ride. I've never seen a horse equal that one of yours. Nor have I. It didn't look to me as though you gave that horse his head at any time. Silver's good for many more miles. Well, what now? You're going ahead with Tonto and me. You leave the soldiers here? Yes. We don't know where the Indians are waiting. They'd hear us if the entire troop advanced. You're right. The three of us will be able to get close enough to the bridge for our purpose. What if my men are needed? We'll have time to send for them. But it's important that we be on hand when the stage is held up. I said last night you were in charge, and I'm sticking to my bargain. Good. Now I'll give your men their orders. Lone Ranger 
stranger with Captain Meadows and Tonto carefully approached the Willow Creek Bridge, the stage was thundering toward the same point. Mort and Kramer, confident that all would go well, were discussing their scheme. Does White Bear know just what to do, Mort? Sure does. He'll be waiting for us, all right. Get along there! Get along there! Mort, I have to hand it to you. Yeah? No one, not even Captain Meadows, suspects a thing. Wouldn't have sent us for the stage if they had, would they? And even if they did suspect something, even if they saw White Bear hold us up, they still couldn't prove we'd sold those guns. Of course they couldn't. What's there to prove? White Bear holds us up. He takes the guns. But there ain't no cash change in hand that anybody can see. <laughs> right. Get along there. Isn't that the bridge on ahead? That's her right now. How will the chief work this? The way they got it fixed, he'll be down in that there holler just this side of the creek. Yes? Just before we get there, he and his braves will ride out, firing their shooting iron just like the mean business. Mm, sounds dangerous. <laughs> Don't you worry, none. Them painted devils knows how to handle themselves. Their shooting irons will be aiming straight up. And then? <laughs> well, shucks, we can't fight off a whole passel of redskins, can we? Who can blame us for pulling up the horses? Get on there! Haven't seen a sign of them yet. They paid for this stuff. They'll be showing up. But I've... There they are. Now put on a good show. Someone might be coming along and maybe they mightn't. But we're playing it safe. Yes. You stop me. Give the Redskins a high full of that! I'll fire over their heads. Stand away from the stage! You stop me! Fight like their stage! For the last of Redskins, get along there! You watch like their stage! Or pay the face yet again! Let us through! The soldiers will get you for this! You stop! We have a transport! Pull up the horses! Stop the horses, Mort! Stop before we get killed! You get them down from stage. Blast you! If the troops were here, you wouldn't do it. Get them down. We ain't got no choice. No use risking our lives over arms we can't save. Ah, you stand over there. We're doing what you tell us, ain't we? Ka name in a talo sini. Go kayo. Go harmonica your sin. What kind of blame fool palaver is that? Me tell brave, take box from stage. You aren't going to get away with this. You not make trouble. White bear let you leave. Well, Eric, well, nothing we could do. You made it look real enough to fool anyone more. <laughs> Anybody snooping around would sure think it was a real thing. And that's a fact. What matter? You stay here. Right there, find out what matter. Now, what in tarnation are them redskins gabbing about? Looks to me like one of those boxes of guns broke open. They're too doggone excited. I don't particularly like the looks of this. They look sore about something. Pale face, come here. He mean us? I reckon he does. Come along. Might as well find out what this is all about. Pale face falls to great chief White Bear. Pale face, speak with lying tongue. Huh? You look foot. Take a look at that box it broke. There ain't a gun in it. It is filled to the top with rocks. Pale face dogs try fool White Bear. Pale face die. Oh, but chief, now look, listen here. What I could have happened? White Bear pay much gold for guns. But guns not here. We didn't have no idea the guns wasn't there. It's a mistake. Listen, you'll get your gold back. White bear, rich chief. White bear have plenty gold. But me kill pale face with lying tongue. Don't! Don't do it! We'll get more guns for you. Too late now. Gartu! Mokachi! Tell that pain of devils to get away from me! Well, they're going to kill us! It's the soldiers! They're up in the hills! Mela Puta! Nika Nuna Pa! Sota Malita! Jake Rosa Troops summoned by Tonto in the stage's first attack by the Indians came pouring down from the hills, sweeping the ranks of the Indians with their concentrated fire. Their charge took the Braves completely by surprise. Chief 
white bear, though an enemy of the whites, was no coward. He fought fiercely, time after time, rallying his discouraged tribesmen. The superior training of the soldiers was not to be denied, and at length, they compelled the Indians' complete surrender. Fighting over, Captain Meadows and the Lone Ranger advanced upon the frightened figures of Mort Leeds and Eric Kramer. There they are, two traitors to their own people. You are satisfied with the proof you have of their guilt? If a military court doesn't find it sufficient to sentence them to death, I'll resign my commission. Cap, Cap, them engines held us up. They found out about the shipment. There wasn't a blame thing we could do. We had to give in to them, Captain. Quiet. Both of you are finished. Yeah. You mean that... I mean that lies won't help you now. What, Captain, I tell a you... The masked man told me that you had sold out to White Bear. You can't prove... You can't prove a thing. But I can. You convicted yourselves when the Indians found those boxes didn't contain guns. But listen, Captain, You were I... convicted in the only possible way. It ain't so, I tell you. We only did... We had no we... other way to prove your guilt. You hid the gold White Bear paid you. The stage it was taken before was burned. Leaving no evidence to disprove your lying story, Mort. But I tell there you... There was but one way to show you up in your true colors. And that was to trick you into confessing before witnesses. It was the masked man's idea. He suggested the plan, and I followed his instructions. I'll bet that's the same masked fellow I met before. And when he met you, he saw enough to convince him that you were a traitor. If I ever get my hands on him, You I'll... won't. Both of you will be tried for treason. And you, Mort, will be tried for Judd's murder as well. There's just one thing I can thank you for. What's that? Your scheme brought the engines here and let the other stage with the guns get through to the fort. In fact, your plan helped that of the masked man. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. (laughs) 